Yep. We're now recording our Chaos Grimoire Lab Working Group call on November 26. Welcome, everyone. Oh, sorry, Daniel, I interrupted you. Please continue. Oh, no, no, no. So, uh, yeah, so last week, so we were uh, discussing about a specific metric we were interested in. Uh, and in this case, we we were talking about some request specifically. Um, perhaps one of the things we we thought might be possible with existing data was okay. What is the rate of issues weighted by community interest level, or if that oh. rate? Oh, Sorry, I just saw. I have to. I don't have time today. I need to renew my green card. I just saw the appointment pop up. <laughs> okay. Bye. Sorry. Bye bye. <laughs> that is important. But goodbye. <laughs> I'm still here. I'll help take notes. Yeah. Thanks. You are welcome in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's something important, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we were discussing about this idea of rate of issues or workload adequacy or if the rate of issues changing was due to a growing community, being more involved, raising issues, or because the, uh, the project had too many bugs and so on. So for this, we, we had this, oh, let me share my screen. So uh, is this? Grimoire uh, Lab mockup, this, I guess. You see the mockup? Yep, I see it. Yeah. So, um, so this is what we produce. So we can say that we are great designers. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Um, so for today, uh, this is something we have in the agenda. Uh, we thought, well, maybe we can talk about if some of these data exists in the, in the indexes. And um, if so, basically, once we do this research, start creating the specific dashboard we are interested in, and perhaps this is kind of similar to the sum of this that we have here in some time. So, yeah, so this is the proposal for today. Um, any, what do you think? I think that sounds great. Um, I guess maybe we had, it seemed like when you were on the mock-up, there were a couple different approaches that could be taken. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just pick maybe one or two, or do you want to try to do the whole thing? You know what I mean? Because we had like, um, if I look at the notes from last week, um, hmm. I have to. Uh, BMI, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, producers, consumers, issues. We had kind of a variety of different things. Mm -hmm. So did did you want to just do one of those to start, or? Yeah. Um. <coughs> So yes, um, uh, I'd say to do the things a bit different this time, we could start by building a markdown help text, mm -hmm. defining yep. the concepts we need. For instance, what are we calling consumers here? So we could start by that, which is straightforward, mm -hmm. at least. <laughs> from the point of view of the technical abilities needed for building that. Mm -hmm. And once we have the, these basic concepts, we can start building the panel because we are going to be able to find a way to represent consumers or whatever in the charts. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we are going to have the help written at the moment we have the panel, which is yeah. something we never do. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, yep, yeah, any other comment? No, that sounds good. Okay, uh, Matt, do you have access to the Chaos dashboard? Uh, I don't know. Because perhaps we can have you a volunteer. Like, like yes and no. <laughs> I've seen it. I think I've had access, and I'm not sure if I do now. Could you put it in the chat? Uh, so the dashboard is. This one, which is chaos.ptorg.io, then I can 
I don't think I have access, believe it or not. Okay. Because so, I think I tried to get to it just the other day. Yeah, let me stop sharing um, sharing again. I, do, I see it now. I see it. Um, can you can you log in if you go to the bottom left uh, button that you have for login there? Um, do you have that access? Uh, where would it be? Show me on your screen. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, I was. Uh, yeah, here we go. So we have this button here at the bottom. So this one is login, logout. I just log in. Let me take a look. Uh, I do. I have it. So login. Yeah, I don't think I have anything here. Oh, so you don't have your own password, right? I doubt. I doubt. Let me. I mean, I'll try. Um, I was asking because it would be good if uh, you try your first uh, widget, so then you can. Share your screen and create this. I, I do not. Okay. So then I, I can do it. Okay. Um, yeah. So not a bad idea for me to have it. I'm going to send whomever an email. <laughs> I'm going to follow through. Sounds good. So then Alberto, I can, I can, I can be the one sharing the screen and so on. Does it make sense? To do build things. And well, I think for the first widget, mm -hmm. the definition is open, so anyone is welcome to, to define any of the concepts we have here. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I will start by creating a new visualization here, maybe. Yeah, so just, just a quick comment. Uh, sorry, Alberto. So our, our goal today would be to have at the end like a dashboard like this, and then like a help section with some definitions and so on. So the goal for now is to, to build this help uh, widget here. So gotcha. Okay. So that's the that was the comment with respect to building the markdown. Yeah. I guess uh, Matt, you can click on the several buttons you see on the left. And the, the only problem is that you won't be able to to say what you have produced. But well at least if you want to anyone in the call or watching the video afterwards is interested in doing this, you can basically do in the same. You can do the same. So I just click in the visualize section. Then these are all of the visualizations we have available for the several data sources. In this case for chaos, these are 323. So then we click on the plus button and then there are some basic charts. So the one we are interested in is uh, in the markdown. So we have this markdown here. There are some others. So you know, areas, dot plots, horizontal bars, and so on. So I go for the markdown. Um, yeah, so this is this is a markdown, so we can do things like blah, blah, blah. Then I play, and then you can see things here, so that's all. And then you can change like, the size of everything. Okay. This is the markdown. So, um, yeah. so we do have the usual, I think it's with uh, just one star, I don't remember. No, this is maybe with two. Or underscore. Anyone remembers uh, about markdown syntax? Yeah, that was too. <laughs> <Make it up. laughs> so I am, um, I am following along, just so you know. But okay. Um, so we do have this concept of oops. Um, well, we have BMI on the one side, and then we have evolution of. Uh, consumers, producers, and issues, as far as I remember. So it seems yes. that we have once and again uh, these three terms, right? Issues, uh, consumers, and producers. So any, any question? No, I think I agree with you. OK. Um, so then perhaps we can go for consumers, uh, producers, um, perhaps issues to start with. I don't know. We can use any other. Um, Time related thing as pull requests, for instance, or similar stuff. But well, let's start with issues. Okay. So, producers, um, okay, we were discussing here. We said maybe 
these are the people sending and getting accepted some commits. Uh, so these might be the people sending pull requests and producing commits. Is this something that makes sense? Yeah, we can have both, but if we want to have those getting accepted commits, we uh -huh. should filter by merge pull request. Mm -hmm. So, um, those people sending and getting accepted pull requests. That's something that works for you. Yeah. Someone said anything? Yeah, that sounds fine. I mean, do we care if they commit directly? Oh, that makes sense as well. Or people that. Um, well, let's start with this. Then consumers are perhaps the rest of the community, we can say. Any other participant? Or we, will, we want to focus on um, any specific uh, data source? What do you think? Are you talking about producers or are you on consumers? Oh, I see no, co consumers, sorry. Okay. Well, what did we have? Oh. How did we define consumers? Yeah. So consumers, we have things as force downloads, packages, and so on. That is something. Yeah, these are the people that are consuming, but we don't okay. have that data. <laughs> so we went with an, a second option that might be number of people not even producing code at all. Oh, yeah. So, so this would be a measure of total, how do we get that? Total people involved in the project minus the producers? Uh, can we have people that are producers and consumers at the same time, I guess? Yeah, probably. So do we want to include those that are producers as consumers as well? Because they, they might be create other events in the community, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Kevin, that was you. Can was that you me? me? Yeah, we that can was, hear you. That wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So consumers could be the people submitting issues and submitting pull requests. I'm thinking about the contributor funnel definition, open source contributor funnel definition by Mike McQuay. Mm -hmm. So basically consumers are the people that are uh, opening issues in, in GitHub or asking questions in Stack Overflow, or things like that. So it's basically people that has downloaded the tooling and are, are uh, asking about how it works or issues they have found. Mm -hmm. So with that definition, probably people sending pull requests are not consumers, are mostly producers. Yeah, the, the, actually, the definition in Mike or Mike is uh, there. You have uh, users, that are the people downloading the thing and uh, submitting issues and mm -hmm. asking questions and stuff like that. Then you have contributors, that are the people that are answering the questions or solving the issues or uh, even submitting a pull request could be an option. And then the maintainers are the people that are directly committing or getting accepted the pull request they have sent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but we... Three, three yeah. layers they, mm -hmm. they... In this case, what we are defining as producers, or we, we have defined, we can change this, is people that are sending and getting accepted pull requests, or people that have committed directly to the code repository. So basically, key to positive. Producers are maintainers in, for that definition, right? Uh, yeah, we can we can indeed link to any other, perhaps have some references 
in the help. Yeah. Um, can you can you share with us, Manrique, the specific link? Yeah, the, I can. I can. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So we would have people involved submitting issues using communication channels and other pieces of the infrastructure. Then we have producers that are people sending and getting accepted pull requests, people that have committed directly to the code repository. And if we want to be aligned with the definition that Manrique mentioned, then we can go and say users, uh, contributors, and maintainers. Yeah, it seems like the definition that Menrique was putting forward was what we're calling producers is what he was referring to as contributors and maintainers. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what we're calling consumers is what Menrique, you were calling users. Okay. Yeah. I see what I see on your screen there, Daniel. Mm -hmm. So we can start with any of these definitions. So, so the, the only problem I see is that we can, um, we, we don't have a, a real way of tracking users unless we are analyzing communication channels and so on. So perhaps there are some people asking for help in uh, in the mailing list from time to time or the IRC channels, right, in, in chaos. But that's all we can produce. Yeah, I, I, if we are using just GitHub or Git and GitHub information, I will, I will go for the simplest uh, way that basically the people submitting issues are users, the people submitting pull requests are contributors, and the people committing code are maintainers. Of course, if we can create a new alias or a new index of information that has all the kinds, all, all of the types of activities done, we can create a new index with tagging people, okay, if, if you are, if for a, this action is to submit code or submit a question, then you, you are a contributor or, man, or maintainer or, or whatever. And of course, people can have the, uh, the same role, or different roles in the community. They could be contributors or they can be users and maintainers because they are seeing uh, patches and I mean, seeing issues and then submit an issue. And then also the ones writing the code to fix it. So basically they are both size user and maintainer. But I mean, that's how you decide to visualize things. I, I like this definition because it's, it's aligned with the idea of uh, open source community managers, one of the roles they should have is to get from users to maintainers. Mm -hmm. So the key point for man uh, sustainability of the project is how do you get maintainers into the project. And basically is uh, how you feel the path of nurturing people from using the, the, the tooling to contributing and then to maintaining it, if it's that possible. Mm -hmm. But that's a longer discussion probably for a talking chaos con or post. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe we can use this definition we see here, which is people who review and merge contributions, and at the same time directly contribute to the uh, to the repository if that happens. And those would be the producers. Yeah, which is basically what we have here. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, let me go to. Oh, not here. Uh, here, yeah. So we would have those people, producers. Let's use these two definitions. Those people sending or getting accepted pull requests, people that have committed directly to the code repository. Um, yeah. And then consumers would be anyone else. Users. Contributors, maybe. We do have a difference between this definition we have here, um, the contributors funnel, which is we say that those sending pull requests are producers as well. Mm. 
because those are in reality producing code. Say that again? Yeah, so we do have a difference between these producers, maintainers, definition here and the definition we have in the contributors funnel, uh, which is we say that producers are those sending pull requests as well. While the definition of maintainers is only those reviewing. Uh, yeah, who can actually do the merge and commit directly. That's yeah. how I understand the maintainer. So we can keep using the consumers producers thing or we can say producers, some of them maintainers. Whoops. Um, yeah. Okay, that's okay. fine with me. Okay, it's source code in this case. Oh, what well, not? Sideways, we can say. Um, Okay, and then let me copy the URL we have here. Mm. So we have this URL. <coughs> and then we can go for issues, and those that are consumers, or we go for any, any data source we have. What do you mean? Yeah, so we said uh, um, in the Jamboard, we have like the, I remember we have the producers, we have the consumers, yeah. and then we, we were thinking about issues because this was part of the discussion we had here. The rate of yeah. issues changing due to a growing community, et cetera, et cetera. So we can simply focus on issues and then this concept of producers, consumers. Versus what? Were you suggesting something else to oh, focus on? Versus basically any kind of event produced in the community message in a Slack. I would we just stick with it. Okay. For the moment, because that is a, I like, I hope, a fairly delineated event. She's mm -hmm. uh, as back. tracking system. Let's use this. So this would be our help. So probably it makes sense to have something like this as well here. Then this work. So producers. Uh, Alberto, I don't know if this is close to the help you were expecting. Or would you would like to see anything else? Up to now, I think is enough. Probably in the future, we are going to add here the metrics, mm -hmm. some explanation about the metrics. But as far as we don't have any metric by now, just let the definitions there and go back later to, to complete this. OK. So um, then I can save this visualization so uh, we can use uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't remember the specific nomenclature we had. Uh, Alberto, maybe help. And something else. Yeah. Because as this is not related to a specific data source. Mm -hmm. Well, if you know the name of the index you are planning to use, you could start by the name of, of the index. But in this case, you can just name it. Um, with the, the name of the panel and help. Yeah, um, so probably our panel is going to be, uh, how do we want to call this? Mm. Uh, we mentioned about workload adequacy, maybe? Oh, what is this whole thing called? Yeah. Um, 
we have this yeah, workload adequacy was something that you had brought up last week yeah might be something yeah okay because i think it's it was i think we we're having a hard time coming up with a single name yeah probably <laughs> so workload adequacy okay uh, and we save awesome so um well that's the help of our uh, dashboard we, we can go now and create a dashboard if you want with this specific help and then keep adding new things so uh for this i'm opening this uh other side here so to create a dashboard we go to the dashboard section these are all of the dashboards available here and then basically this dashboard is empty right so we click here the add button and then we look for our health which is this workload that i was saying okay so we have this then we can extend this up to here so uh and then we can probably name this as uh only with help so this is the way we can you can change the title as you can see here on the top left it's changing right mm. Okay, so we have this change and then we save it. So we can say uh, workload adequacy. Um, and this panel measures compares maybe first pieces, pursues uh, consumers and producers. Uh, yep. And then perhaps uh, we can store the time with the dashboard, or maybe not. So in this case, what does that mean? Store a time with the dashboard? Yeah. So this means that if we have here 90 days, uh, once we have the data and so on, this would visualize only 90 days. If we say a year, then we would have this with year. So so far, basically, I guess we don't care. Okay. So we can save this as it is, and click here. So. Basically, if I share with you this URL, you should be able to access this. So let me share with you. Then this would be our first dashboard together. Um, I do see it. Yeah. Can, you, can you see the dashboard? I do, yeah. Yep. Okay, perfect. So then the next step is, so we have uh, people involved submitting issues using communication channels and other pieces of the infrastructure, and then producers, those people sending and getting accepted pull requests, and then we have issues, we have back tracking system and so on. Um, so if we go to any of these widgets, then probably is the time to start uh, producing this. So um, if we want and say, these are our consumers and these are our producers. We may need to start uh, filtering information from the existing aliases, right? So uh, maybe Alberto, you would like to go through the aliases and indexes we have? It's not just not to talk to me all the time. But, yeah. <laughs> well, as you, as you want, but. Uh, please go to the corresponding screen so mm -hmm. we can see the name of the indexes in chaos. Yeah. So, well, basically we have different indexes, one index per each data source. And uh, on top of that, we have some special aliases to aggregate some information. So. From there, you can see we have Git, Gary, Discourse, uh, and then we have Git areas of code or GitHub issues. All of them are simple in the sense they affect only to a single data source. Git and Git areas of code are different because Git is based on commits and Git areas of code is based on files instead. So if you go for Git, you are going to have one document per each commit. So if you can expand one of the results on the right, Danny, yeah. 
that's the information we have for uh, a commit in the system. And now if you go for the other index, the Git areas of code, what we have here are files. So we don't have commits as documents anymore. And if you, if you expand a document, we have a file. That means if you go there for the has and you filter the has in by clicking on the magnifying glass, yeah. So, and now you collapse the document. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. What we have are different documents because probably this commit affects several files. So we have one document per each one of, of those files. This is just to let you know the difference between these two indexes. And then we have other indexes, as I say, that aggregate information from several sources. The, can, I ask a can I ask you a question? So is the idea here that some of the indexes are just extremely large, like Git, and by producing an index that is like Git areas of code, you're able to localize that index down or kind of reduce the amount of data associated with that index? What's the reason for doing that? This is some more a matter of the view of the data we need for building the visualizations. Okay. Because uh, if you have, if you go for the commits, we don't have the the list of the files affected by that commit. And due to the work or the way of working in Kibana, for some specific visualizations, we need to represent the information. Uh, in different ways. For instance, if you want to count, only counting the number of files affected by a commit, that uh, is something easy because we have the number of files in, in the commit. So you can just start aggregating this number commit by commit and you get the count. But if you want to go for a specific information related with those files, for instance, the file extension or file contents, the number of lines touched in, in that file, you need to go to the, uh, to the level of file. And for that, you need a different index because you need to have this information and you need to aggregate that by, by file. Okay. Of course, th th there are some common things because we need to be able to to aggregate information by commit. So you are going to find the, the has in both indexes. So in areas of code, you can find all the files related to a single commit. And well, in <coughs> some way, you could have the same information from Git areas of code and from Git but not the opposite. The problem is exactly what you said, Matt. If you go for Git areas of code, you are going to have a lot more uh, documents in the index. So going for Git is uh, much uh, easier and uh, is also cheap in terms of, of resources than going for Git areas of code that usually is going to have millions of, of documents. Mm. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. So, well, uh, regarding to the rest of the indexes, if you go for affiliations, affiliations is an, an alias that aggregates all the data sources that are available in, in Elasticsearch. In this case, we use this to be able to filter information by author. So as you know, we have sorting hat and sorting hat, we are managing profiles. So the way of, for instance, searching for all the information related to Daniel is going to affiliations and filtering by his name. And that way we are going to have all the activity uh, created by Daniel in the different data sources. Yes. Yeah. So how, how is, uh, do you remember exactly the call for yeah. the aliases? Yeah, just type get and mm -hmm. then start typing aliases. Oh, and yeah. The autocomplete fu function is going to help you. Yeah. But it's it's underscore, right? Aliases. Yeah, but don't mind about that because it's going to autocomplete you. 
that is no. You yeah. need to go for the other one, and I think you need to. Oh, it was the aliases slash cat. Maybe? Yeah, no. cat. Yeah, you had this before now. No, okay. You have everything and I start typing aliases, and now you have okay. the the right one. Aliases, yeah, and now this one. underscore cat slash aliases, yeah. Okay. And remove the query. Uh, you're right. That's another thing. Whoops. Uh, yeah. Okay. So these are the different index aliases we have in the system. If we want to uh, make sure what affiliations is pointed at, you can type also the slash affiliation in your query. Uh, like this, you say? Yeah, there's lots of affiliations. And click on play. Mm -hmm. And that you have the indexes that are pointed by the alias. So in this case, uh, affiliations is aggregating Git, GitHub, and Piper main, which is mailing lists, by the way. Mm -hmm. So the idea of this index is uh, allowing us to work uh, cross in a cross index way. So for instance, if you want to know uh, the people that is not correctly affiliated, instead of going index by index, you can go for affiliations and build a panel on top of this to show all the people that uh, have no affiliation. Or if you need to count the different contributions of, the, of an author or of an organization, you can go for this alias and then start uh, calculating things like the number mm. of commits, the number of issues, the number of pull requests, and everything from the same view, from the same alias in this case. So you don't need to have different visualizations. You could have a single table based on affiliations to get all those metrics. In other case, you cannot have those metrics in the same visualization because remember that each visualization is built on top of a single index pattern. <coughs> and well, I think this is an introduction um, to the aliases. And now the question is, which index do we want to use? So in to our mockup, what we have here are producers. And the way we are defining producers are those committing at the Git repositories and pull requests. So in this case, we would have Git, um, GitHub issues with pull requests, because pull requests and issues in the GitHub index is all at the same place. Um, the other one are issues. So this is simply Git, GitHub issues, only the issues thing, the issue side. And then we have consumers that are probably the rest of the people. So those producing issues and commenting the main list because these are the free data sources we have, Git, issues pull request and emails, right? Yeah, so to make it simple in this case, I'll go for timeline to build the yeah. chart mm -hmm. because timeline is a bit different from the other visualizations. In timeline, you can directly write uh, expressions and on each expression, you can specify a different index. So you don't need to rely on only one index pattern. You can start just uh, querying one index pattern for a line and then another index pattern for, for the next one. And you can even combine the results of one and another. Yeah. So in the, in the case of timeline, uh, this is, uh, you can chain keep changing, uh, changing uh, functions and so on. So you can add other functions. We will see this, this later, but basically the good point about timeline in this case is that we can use existing aliases or we can use different indexes in the same chart. This is not allowed by other visualizations or the usual visualizations in Kibana. So this is why we have these aliases from time to time. The question mm -hmm. is why this is an advantage over using, for instance, affiliation and any other visualization. 
And the answer is because if you go for any other visualization and you use start using affiliation, what you are going to need is filtering commits, filter, filtering pull requests or filtering issues some way to be able to count each one of them separately. In this case, as we can use separate indexes on each uh, uh, timeline expression, we don't need to do that filtering, which is easier. We could, in fact, so how to separate the information, for instance, if you go to visualize, please, Daniel. Yeah. This could be interesting for uh, people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you start building, for instance, a table. I think a table is the easiest to understand. Select affiliations. Yeah. And now what we have here is the count of all the things under affiliations for the last 90 days. If we want, for instance, to count, to count only commits, you could go for the metric and modify the metric to be the unique count, for instance, of hash. And now this is the number of commits because hash is a field that only appears on those documents coming from Git index. So we are counting only unique commits in this case. If we wanted to count pull request, we will need to do something similar for, for pull request. I don't know what the field is, but maybe it's not going to be so easy because uh, issues and pull requests are in the stored in the same index. So probably we are going to need a more advanced metric to count that. I think you probably need to nest uh, yeah. any yes, other application to be able to filter. So but at the, this the, point, hmm. can I ask a question? Hmm. So at this point, the 1,481, that number right there, what, what is that exactly telling me? This is the number of commits that were made in the last 90 days in, well, in Git, because they are commits. Okay, so that's, that's okay, fair enough, thank you. So the, the idea here is you can get the number, but you need for each type of contribution, for each index, to create a, a filter or a metric, a filtered metric to get the number. But in timeline, if you wanna, again, to timeline, uh, Danny, yeah. getting this is easier because you can go directly for Git and then you can add a metric there. Yeah, this would be a metric equal uh, cardinality, which is the unique count. And then you keep having this. I, I don't know, do you see the drop down menu? I do. Okay. Um, and this would be, so we go for uh, producer. So this would be author UID, which are the unique. Uh, author UID, this is the, this is the metric. Yeah, okay. And the good part is, is that now we can uh, type another expression for consumers and we can yeah. base that expression in a different index without any additional filtering to exclude commits because commits are going to be in Git index and not in GitHub uh, underscore issues. Yeah, so in this case, we would have like, for instance, the other, one of the other fields we have is GitHub issues. Um, then the, oh, this is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now, is this working now? Hey, hello. Oh, do we need commas now? I don't remember. Yeah. Okay, so we need commas. Okay, this is not far. Okay, so we have an index. In this case, this is GitHub issues. Um, the time field, which is the, the time we are using, to be more creation date. Now you need a query. Yeah, query. This is, that was query? Q. 
Oh, QED, right. Then we say well, this is going to be pull request colon true, or it stands for pull request. So that should be that was yeah. this way one true. Okay, true. So this is for, for filtering in only pull requests and no, no, this is not no work. issues. So maybe it's this pull request. No, uh, mm, so we have GitHub is use, maybe this is. Use a uh, lowercase instead of, yeah. yeah. Okay, now. Um, so these are the, the, the red line are pull requests, but we are interested in understanding who's sending those pull requests, right? Yeah. So then would be, we need another metric, which is uh, the same as before, the cardinality. So cardinality. Uh, you. Uh, and now is when the fun starts because, well, you have producers from Git and from GitHub. And yep. now you need to add both into a single line, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the good part of this of timeline is you can do this kind of operations uh, between expressions. So you can add, multiply, you can yeah. subtract or whatever. I think here, oh yeah, this would yeah, be- Just by cha chaining the both expressions. Instead yeah. of the first comma, you can type add Yep. Yeah, exactly that. And then we do this. Yeah. So then we have, yeah, all together. And then we say label, we have producers. We can say uh, PRs plus commits, for instance. Ta da! <laughs> all the co operations, are they happening asynchronously? Can you can you ask again, Armstrong? I mean, if the operations uh, like the commands when you're typing, is it happening asynchronously? Because you see, like the graph, the change instantaneously as you type, like uh, close to real time. Yeah. So so what? So this is this is directly asking uh, the Elasticsearch da a, uh, database. So each time I I click on the play, this is querying that a specific query to, to Elasticsearch. And then each time you see like this uh, drop down menu, this is a dynamic, dynamic men menu provided by Kibana in this case. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Okay, so we have unique producers, right? Yeah, and I think it's time to save and finish the meeting. <laughs> yeah, we're approaching the end. Yeah. So then the next step would be uh, to say, well, we, we produce the same for consumers. So we, we have to create oh. another time series for GitHub issues um, emails. So then we would have all of the consumers in chaos. Yep. And we can keep adding this to this specific chart. And then the last thing would be to see over time the GitHub issues. And then we would have like a third line. And then we would have our first uh, widget similar to this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing is save this. Um, I want to save the entire lion thing. So we can say- uh, I want to save current expression. Oh, it's current expression as dashboard panel? Yeah, because remember that Kivana calls panel uh, the same mm -hmm. as visualization. Yeah, but, okay. Mm -hmm. So then we were mentioning this, we were naming this as the quasi, yep. and then I can say like work in progress to, for the next time. Okay, so we save. Perfect. And you can add it to the panel, to the dashboard, I mean. Okay. So it's going to be easier to access it. And remember that this is the one we built. So we have this here, we move this here, we have this perhaps, whoops, this one a bit bigger, this, and then we save. 
There's a uh, question. Yeah, okay. Armstrong, you had a question? No, that was me. There was a question that Menrique had put into the chat. Oh, I didn't see that. Um, uh, so uh, the question is, are you counting more than the real ones? So he said, uh, since you are counting committers and PRs, submitters for those that are doing both things, you are counting them twice. So we are going for the author UID, the unique identifier we have in Sorting Hat for the whole number of uh, set of developers. So if they are merged, uh, this should not happen, but we may have different identities in different data sources, so this may happen, so maybe. The thing here is that we are just adding the unique count of authors in Git and the unique count of authors in GitHub. So mm -hmm. we are double counting those people that appears in the data sources, even if uh, the commit is, is the same, the contribution is the same. Mm. Uh, but the, the problem here is that if you have the same UUID in the first expression and in the second one, you are going to have two because you are going to add one plus one. So the way of solving this is using affiliations for this and then from affiliations, filtering in only those contributions that either have has <coughs> or any field specific specific for hmm. uh, a pull request, which in this case uh, should be pull request uh, colon true. By doing that and unique counting the author UUID on top of that, we are going to have the, the right number. But we can do that next week and we can compare the results to make sure that they are in fact uh, different because we are not counting the same. Yeah. I don't know if I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'll put that in the minutes to talk about this next week. Oh, thank yes, you. Please. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. taking it. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so this is all for today. Um, yeah, for those in the US, happy Thanksgiving and see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.